Okay. Do, 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 do. You stand there. This one looks in good nick. We just had these refurbished. So there was me boasting last week about the lovely weather we were having. Yeah, it's gone back to rain again now, isn't it? It's gone back to the norm. April is tomorrow, so we'll have April showers, I guess, for a month. So, did you see what I was doing in the gym? Gareth Davis of Swansea Health Solutions is, as usual, looking after me, putting me back together, letting me run and swim and bike as much as I'm able to. Um, he's been looking after me for years, and I do tend to overdo it a bit and put myself into a bit of mischief. And I'm coming back from some, well, from an injury, but also from some other problems I've caused for myself. Today we're going to talk about the hips, carrying on from last week, and I've been very interested in my hips and my core strength recently because I was having problems with my running and I was probably overdoing it and my biomechanics were all shot and I'd been focusing on my big muscles, which is what we talked about last time, and I was neglecting my small muscles, the muscles that give you stability, but also look after rotation of the femur. He's prescribed me a plan of lots of nasty exercises. You saw the clams with bands with me led on the side there. Um, they're all getting a lot better to start off with. They were pretty horrible. But these single leg exercises are strengthening the small muscles and the big muscles to an extent, but they're, they're focusing on the small muscles of the lower limb that are important in supporting and looking after your movements. And, and there's a lot of, if you, if you watch my, uh, my walking video about gait, a very general video about gait, but um, as we walk our pelvis twists, right? Because we move our foot forward and back. And as our pelvis twists, then um, to keep our foot pointing forwards, we must rotate the femur. If you, if you don't rotate your femur, your foot's going to point that way as well, that's not very good. Um, so you need to rotate your femur to keep your foot pointing forward, right? So we talked about gluteus, we talked about the adductors and we talked about the abductors, gluteus medius and minimus, and we talked about the hip flexors and the hip extensors. And a lot of the time these muscles are balancing us when we're on one leg and what have you. And there is another layer of deep muscles within the hip that are rotating the hip as we walk, which makes us efficient which gives us the gait that we have, all these movements we don't think about. So today, I want to talk about six muscles, six deep muscles of the hip. Similar to how we looked at the rotator cuff muscles, these are six deep muscles of, of the hip. They're a lot more straightforward than the rotator cuff muscles. You'll see a pattern, you'll see a trend, honest. It's not too bad. So here's a pelvis. So as we walk, like I say, the gluteus medius and minimus keep the pelvis level, but also as we walk, we tilt this way, right? So then the, I know they're not on the same scale, but then uh, just by the pelvis moving, yeah, you've got to have a lot of medial and lateral rotation here. So it all, all works, but this is not a video about gait. This is a video about the deep muscles of the hip joint. This might be a bit brief, so I might forget some of the interesting things that I should mention, but hopefully not. So bony things we need to think about. The obturator foramen. This is the obturator foramen here. In life it is covered by a membrane. I'm sure I've got one of those here somewhere. See? In life it's covered by a membrane. We've got connective tissue in there, ligaments and stuff. And there's a little ditty hole up here, a little ditty hole. And that's the obturator canal. And the obturator nerve, an artery, and what have you, will pass through that little hole to get into the medial compartment of the thigh and innervate the uh, adductor muscles. But today, the obturator foramen and that ligament are important because muscles attach here. Other things that are important are this hole here. This is the greater sciatic foramen. A lot of muscles go out through the greater sciatic foramen. Yes, if there's a greater sciatic foramen, there must be a lesser sciatic foramen. Out of interest, it's this one down here between these ligaments. These ligaments are also fun. We'll do those in the next video. We'll do bones and ligaments next time, okay? But this is the greater sciatic foramen. So the obturator foramen and its membrane 
muscles are attached to, greater sciatic foramen, muscles go out of. And you remember that we looked at the, the femur, and the femur had a head and a neck, and we have the greater trochanter of the femur. The greater trochanter of the femur is important today. This is the posterior surface. Uh, there's an intertrochanteric crest there as well. Those are the boy, bony points that we care about today, okay? What does this show us? We're going to have to dissect a little, aren't we? Am I in focus there? Am I in focus here? Am I in focus here? Okay. We're going to have to dissect a little. Gluteus maximus, gone. And straight away we see the sciatic nerve. And this muscle here is piriformis. Piriformis literally means pear-shaped. And the piriformis muscle is actually coming from the inside of the pelvis. Um, look, here's the, the sacrum here. So it's coming from the sacrum um, and it's got the lumbosacral plexus lying upon it and piriformis then passes out through that greater sciatic foramen and out through to the greater trochanter out here, that, that bony bit that you can palpate yourself here. So here is piriformis. It's a great landmark. The sciatic nerve usually comes out inferior to it. Sometimes it splits and some of the sciatic nerve comes out superior to piriformis and some of it inferior to piriformis and sometimes the sciatic nerve goes out through piriformis, which can cause irritation of the sciatic nerve sometimes if you overwork your piriformis, but that's somewhat rare. But the artery and nerve that appear superior to piriformis are the superior gluteal nerve and the superior gluteal artery, and the artery and nerve that appear inferior to piriformis are the inferior gluteal nerve and inferior gluteal artery. So piriformis is a bit of a landmark, okay? Piriformis is important. Now, if piriformis contracts, what action is it gonna give? Um, and this is where this fella comes in. The, the muscle is Uh, the muscle is passing out from the greater sciatic foramen and round to the greater trochanter, so around here. So the muscle is passing out through there, right? Oh, my fingers aren't long enough, but it goes to the greater trochanter. So if it pulls on the greater trochanter, what's going to happen? You're going to get lateral rotation, All right? So you're going to get lateral rotation of the femur at the hip joint if you contract your piriformis. And these were the actions I was doing in the gym, kind of. So there's piriformis. Right, now, you see we've got these three muscles here. So these three muscles as well are going to the greater trochanter as well. Now there's three muscles here, they act together um, and they, because of that, they often get called uh, triceps coxae, right? Um, and we've got obturator internus and the two gemelli muscles, gemellus superior and gemellus inferior. For some reason I get in the habit of calling these gemellus. It doesn't really matter, I suppose. Uh, and no doubt you'll hear different pronunciations anyway, but... So gemellus superior, obturator internus and gemellus inferior. Gemella superior inferior, a bit weedy, difficult to separate from obturator internus. But obturator internus then is similar to piriformis in that, not sure if I've got a model that shows this nicely. I mean, it is difficult to show. I mean, these models as well of the pelvis, you can again see piriformis and you see this muscle coming out here triceps, coxae, or obturator internus and the two gemelli muscles. As you can see, you can only really see one muscle there. Oh, there's a nerve around there. Bonus marks, what nerve is that? Pudendal nerve, yeah. Um, let's go down to the perineum and stuff. Okay, what about this fella over here? What's his, oh, that's not bad. So look at this guy here. It's 
So here's piriformis again. So here's gluteus medius and minimus. Here's the sciatic nerve. And look, you can, you can see the three different muscles there. You get an idea of where they're running from. So the two gemellus muscles and obturator uh, internus. But look, you can see this muscle here as well. This is a nice rectangular muscle. Looks good and powerful, that doesn't it? And it's running kind of in the same direction as all these muscles. So what's that then? So we can see that muscle here as well, right? Nice, flat, rectangular muscle um, running in a similar sort of direction. This is quadratus femoris, quad, right, oh, flat rectangular, femoris of the thigh. And quadratus femoris, its fibers are running in the same direction. It's actually running to that intertrochanteric ridge, right, there's a little ridge between the greater and lesser trochanters. And it's actually running from the ischial tuberosities, which the, uh, or kind of the edge of the ischial tuberosities, which the um, hamstrings are also attached to. And the action of the quadratus femoris muscle is to laterally rotate the femur at the hip. Easy so far, right? Ischial tuberosities are down here, right? Now, so, um, piriformis, obturator internus, the two gemelli muscles, uh, quadratus femoris. One more muscle to go. Obviously, that muscle is obturator externus, because we've done obturator internus. If there's going to be an obturator internus, there's going to be an obturator externus, isn't there? Right, now, obturator internus is named because it covers the, the internal surface of the obturator membrane. Obturator externus comes from the external surface of the obturator membrane. Um, and that, so it just runs on the other side, right? It just runs across here. I don't think I've got a model that shows that. Nope. Nope. Uh, not really. Nope. So you're just going to have to believe me. There is no, <laughs> there is an obturator externus muscle, and it runs from the the membrane here on the external surface um, across the hip, but it also runs to kind of a bit by the greater trochanter. Um, so that means that the obturator externus, when it contracts, its action is to laterally rotate the femur at the hip. So all six of those muscles are lateral rotators of the hip. All six of those muscles, hopefully, I was strengthening lead on my side with um, doing clams with bands, right? Um, the gluteus medius and minimus that we looked at in the last video, we said that those were pretty good medial rotators of the of the hip of the uh, femur of the thigh. Um, and gluteus maximus also helps with a little bit with lateral rotation. But these small six muscles, they're a little bit like the rotator cuff of the shoulder. Their other job is to hold the joint together, so it's pulling the head of the femur and stabilizing it within that hip socket. So it's important in that respect as well, but it's also a lateral rotator of, of, of the femur. They're all lateral rotators of the femur at the hip joint, um, which you do when you're walking, but when you're running and your stride length increases, you're going to put more emphasis on that those muscles are going to need to be stronger and of course not only are they doing those things but they're also stabilizing you balancing you they're, they're muscles of stability when we talk about those mysterious core muscles and you think about the muscles of your abdomen it's these muscles of the of the hip joint as well these deep muscles are core muscles it's the muscles that are holding our limbs onto our trunk that are our core muscles and you can move your legs however you like but if your legs ain't moving your trunk efficiently, you're going to have problems. You're not going to go as fast as you could have done. So those are the six deep muscles of the hip joint that I wanted to talk about. The innovation of these muscles is somewhat boring, which is a good thing. Um, because the muscles are close to the lumbosacral plexus, we saw how the uh, 
piriformis here is is coming from the sacrum here and is covered by the lumbosacral plexus which is producing the big nerves of the lower limb well these muscles are so close to the lumbosacral plexus that they have their own little nerves coming from the lumbosacral plexus to innervate them so we have such wonders as the nerve to obturator internus the nerve to quadratus femoris uh, the nerve to piriformis and things like that so these really aren't things to sit down and learn of course also because that nerve really isn't going very far it's pretty safe it's not very susceptible to damage it might be worth remembering the spinal levels that these nerves come from but that's pretty obvious and pretty straightforward um, in terms of how injury to the spinal cord may affect function at the hip um, but otherwise it's nice and easy it's nice when something's easy for a change isn't it right while we're here and talking about smaller muscles of the hip i mean this week is deeper muscles of the hip last time was big muscles of the hip there's kind of another muscle i'd like to mention that misses both of those categories and it's this little fella here all right so the lower limb is covered by a stocking of fascia it's all beautifully supported by layers and layers of fascia and compartmentalized and stuff and there's a thickening of that fascia here which is the iliotibial band and look how it runs all the way down across the knee and so on and i said that fibers of um, gluteus maximus insert into it and things like that but this muscle here if this is the iliotibial band or iliotibial tract and the stocking of fascia is the fascia lata this, is, this muscle is known as the tensor of the fascia lata or tensor fascia lata. So you can see it pulls on this and puts a bit of tension into it. Um, when you're standing upright and the knee is extended and kind of locked, this muscle helps a little bit with that. You know how you're standing up and you're balancing, you sway a little bit from side to side and all your muscles are, are correcting you. You know, you know, tensor fascia lata plays a little role in that. So it's not a terribly important muscle or a terribly fascinating muscle, but it's there. I didn't want to leave it out. Um, we've covered a, a whole bunch of these now. Okay, All right. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, I hope I managed to keep it a little bit briefer than usual. Uh, all right, next time we'll get deeper and we'll get into the bones of the pelvis. Now we've looked at the femur. We'll go into the bones of the pelvis again in detail look at all the bony bits and we'll look at all the ligaments as well all right see you next time oh god i've got models everywhere now i've got to tidy all this up technicians have gone home for the weekend if i leave it here they'll um think the students have made a mess it's not fair is it right fine doing it